Apparently, I do art now. A couple of years ago, we were given this slab. This is Huon Pine, a native timber to Tasmania. It's a lovely timber to work with, particularly um, turning. It turns beautifully and it smells amazing as you make the cuts. Unfortunately, this is a bit of an odd size. It's not really big enough for a coffee table. Plus, I already have a live edge slab coffee table out of red gum that I made. It's not really thick enough to cut up into, say, turning blanks. It's about 30 mil at this end, maybe 35, and it tapers down to about 20, 25 mil. And this end here is, well, to be honest, a bit crappy. So what we're gonna do is turn it into some artwork. There's enough space here to do a river style, that is where you cut it down the middle and flip the uh, two live edges in the middle. Uh, live edge style trip tech. I'm pretty sure that's how that's pronounced. That's what my wife has told me. It's a set of three. In this case, instead of the glass, we're gonna use epoxy resin uh, and we're gonna fill in that middle section with a bunch of native stuff such as gum leaves, gum nuts, and some banksia nuts. The problem with these live edge pieces is that it's really hard to get a square point to start from. You sort of need to draw your center line where you're gonna split it then do it square relative to that. To make things a bit easier, I cut off the parts we weren't going to use. Off camera, we used these to make a test piece to test out the epoxy and the methods in general. The jigsaw struggled because the battery went flat immediately after it got through the hill. Oops. I followed the line on the bandsaw the best I could. A jigsaw with charge in it would have also done this, but would have wider curve. Then it was off to joint the pieces so they could be thickness down. There was a fair bit of bowing twist, so it took a fair few passes to remove it. With it at its final thickness and one edge jointed, the two ends could be trimmed. For the epoxy, we needed a form. This was made by ripping down some melamine. When I did the test piece, I found it was best to screw up through the base and then each of the pieces so the screws didn't slightly twist the short sides and cause some epoxy to leak. To fill in the void between the two live edge slabs, we're going to use a whole bunch of different native uh, plant life. We're going to use some leaves from gum trees, we're going to use some gum nuts, uh, a couple of different sizes and we're also going to use these banksia nuts. So this is quite a large nut from a banksia tree. You can see all the seed pods, they burst open with fire. Fire causes them to burst open, they don't spit fire. Australia is dangerous but not quite that dangerous. And obviously this is way too big so we're going to take this over to the bandsaw and slice it open. We mixed up about 150 grams of epoxy. This is a two to one mix, so 100 grams of resin and 50 grams of hardener. We used Barnes Epoxy Cast product, which has no odor, it's easy to work with. For some extra color, we tinted it with a few drops of an olive brown dye, about one drop per 50 grams of epoxy. 
His first coat is just to stick everything down so it doesn't float away. After that was dried a second coat. After that was dried, I used my slab flattening jig with the ROM router to route the gum nuts flush and expose their cross sections. Another coat or two were added, then the moment of the truth of removing the form. I was honestly surprised at how easy that popped off. Alright, before I move on, a little bit of a recap. I've got a slab, cut it down the middle, then put it in a mould of melamine that was waxed, so it would release. You could also use mould release or the melamine itself might be all right. Uh, I've poured what ended up being four layers of epoxy. Um, they're all blended together you can't tell. The reason I did it that way is because I wanted one layer to stick everything down because if I just poured everything on it would all float to the top. Second layer was to get it mostly filled then I came back with a router and knocked off the high points of the gum nut so you can now see the cross sections of them. Then a third coat to top it all up. Turns out I was a little bit under on that third coat, so I had to do a fourth coat, uh, but we're pretty much done now. The texture on the back is quite interesting. It's much brighter because the gum leaves are at the bottom, so that'll be something that we'll explore in the future. And the texture on it is interesting because it's copied the uh, Decortex, I think it's called, dimpled texture of the melamine, so that's kind of cool. I dry sanded from 80 to 320 grit using CA 1950 sandpaper. This is designed for epoxies and other composite materials. Then I wet sanded by hand with 800 then 1500 grit and polished with Brasso. Using the cross-cut slab, it was super simple to cut it into three. So we've got the trip tack cut into three pieces to actually, well, make it a trip tack. Uh, really super happy with how that's come out. I use a Freud combination blade. That's a Freud industrial rather than a Diablo blade. Um, Price is about the same, maybe five, ten dollars more on Amazon. Uh, if you check the description below, I've got links to that. It's the, let's see, it's the LU83R010 combo blade. So a dedicated cross-cut blade with more teeth, maybe 60 or 80 teeth might have been an even cleaner finish, but that is quite a good finish in, well, essentially a composite of wood and epoxy and eucalyptus leaves. It's quite fragrant in lots of different ways. I've picked up some shawl hook pitcher hanging rail from Bunnings. It's from the Zenith brand. Not a sponsor, just what looked good. So it's aluminium rail. It's basically like a French cleat, but really thin profile. So this will support, I think it's up to 60 kilos. Yeah, 60 kilos, which is way more than what I need. This piece goes on the wall, then this piece goes on the artwork and slides down into there and locks it into position. The problem is this is one rail and I've got now three pieces, so I need to cut this down. Good thing is aluminium's quite soft, so I can cut this on. Actually, any of the power tools that I've got will cut it just fine, or any of the hand tools will cut through aluminium. I'm gonna use the miter saw because uh, 
it does a good job of it. So I just need to divide this into three. It's 600 mil long. That'll give me 200 mil long pieces. Uh, and that is shorter than the, uh, these things. So they won't stick out or anything like that. I was very happy with these mounting brackets and was surprised at how well the plaster hooks went in and secured. So it's a super glary day, so it's making it quite difficult to actually frame all of this properly, but I am super happy with how this has come out. Uh, probably a little bit small for this particular wall, but it's nice being above our couch in the lounge room, and there is always the next version to do. I'm gonna try and sell this one, so you'll see that on Etsy probably sometime shortly, because it was fun to do. That and I had a pretty good time putting it together. It's come up a real treat for a slab that wasn't in the best condition. Thanks for watching.